makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. Fox News wants you to starve. Not metaphorically, but literally. And this came from none other than Laura Ingram's show. And Laura Ingram is probably second place to Tucker Carlson in terms of probably the most horrible human being that Fox News currently has on their payroll. So let's watch this because this was part of a segment that she had uh, on all the problems being caused by the expanded unemployment benefits from the COVID relief bill. So let's watch. I'm not an economic professor. If you get $800 a week unemployment benefits and you live with a partner who also is getting $800 a week unemployment benefits, $1,600 a week, Laura, $83,000. By the way, what the fuck is wrong with his eyes? Like, seriously, if you had, like, googly eyes, they would be less ridiculous than his actual real biological eyes. It's kind of hard to see a guy like this and not think that he is mentally unstable. But I guess that is a fitting guest for a Fox News segment. Hours a year for that household and unemployment benefits. The median income in America is only 63000 We're incentivizing people to stay home. What if we gave that additional unemployment benefits to employers to incentivize people to go to work? Wow, what a gotcha. Look, look at his face, like the smugness of his. Why would they give that money to employers? Like, as if companies haven't already received so many benefits over the last couple of decades. You know, whether it's post-financial uh, crisis bailouts or simply the fact that the minimum wage has not recovered its real value since it was last raised. I mean, the minimum wage actually hasn't recovered its its real value since the 1970s, I think. I mean, that's a de facto subsidy. I know that they'll never admit it, but that's a de facto subsidy. You're basically cheapening the cost of labor for every business in the country. How is this not a benefit? Uh, and, and yet they want more. But anyway, let's keep watching. Well, what if, what if we just cut off the unemployment. I mean, yeah. hunger, is a, it, hunger is a pretty powerful thing. I don't mean physical hunger, because people who truly in, are in need need help. Uh, there's only one type of hunger, and that's physical hunger. You, you can't, like, invent some... You can't argue that you're, what you really want is, like, some metaphorical, abstract hunger. You literally just said you want people to be hungry so that they have the incentive to go to work. There's, there's only one type of hunger that leads to that. That is physical hunger. I'm talking about people who can work but refuse to work. But the government is, is literally putting anvils in many ways on people's shoulders, either through the mandates, regulations, and now through free money, which obviously we're all going to... The piper eventually has to be paid. Uh, John, yeah. John, I want to ask... Whenever they, there's an argument of free money... Um, they always bring up this at some point, we're going to have to pay for it. Yet they never gave that excuse with the tax cuts, which added 3.9 trillion. Yes, 3.9 trillion to the U.S. debt. To say nothing of every stupid war that has been started by the Republicans that this channel has consistently coddled. So don't pretend like you actually care who pays for this or whether something's going to be paid. You just don't want any, when, whenever something is added to the debt, the only justification, like the only times when, when these people think that's okay is insofar as it screws over working people or bombs countries full of brown people. That's really what they want. I ask you though about this, this idea of work-life balance, because look, no one wants to miss their kids growing up. No one wants to, you stay in the office your whole life, you, you, you never see your family. So I, that's really important. However, have we taken that a step too far when you think of, well, a lot of the millennials talking about, well, I need time for self-care. I don't know why I'm harping on that tonight, but the whole self-care movement is a little, I mean, my mother is not with us anymore, but she worked from the time she was 12 during the depression. If she heard the self-care thing, I think her head would explode. 
<laughs> you know, I think that's right. Old I school. have a friend in the military who trains military dogs, Laura, and they only feed a military dog at night because a hungry dog is an obedient dog. Well, if we're not causing people to be hungry to work, that, then we're providing them with all the meals they need sitting at home. I'm completely with you, Laura. These benefits make absolutely no sense to us. And so basically what they want is to treat the standard, the typical American worker, like a dog. Make them hungry so that then they feel the incentive to work. This is insane. This is so insulting. Anyone stupid enough to still think that Fox News represents this kind of right-wing populist movement or sentiment that they actually care about working people, which was kind of the reason why a lot of people voted for Trump. Uh, oddly enough. But that is the gist of the right-wing populist movement, that they actually supposedly care about working people. But then you hear something like this, and you realize this is all a ruse. This is why far-right populism is a farce in the US. A complete, utter farce, because they're just using the rhetoric to get people to vote for them. And then when they come to power, they behave exactly like traditional conservatives slash public services, slash social benefits, uh, set up right to work laws to screw over workers, continue with union busting. All these po policies that make people poorer, that make people have jobs that are more precarious because they don't have any security in those jobs. That's what they want. It's it's the ruse for more corporatism. There's nothing populist about this. Absolutely nothing populist about this. And anyone, like I said, stupid enough to believe that Fox News, and especially people like Tucker Carlson, think that they stand for anything in favor of workers is an absolute idiot. And it takes segments like this to show, you know, the reptilian face of these people. Because that's what they are. They're, they're fucking corporate reptiles. On top of the impact of not getting employees and not being able to run our businesses, in my industry, we have meat prices are up 10 percent. Chicken prices are up 15 percent. No, inflation is killing. No, it's killing is going to kill business. I mean, it's going it, to yep. that's the next shoe to drop the Democrats. <sighs> well. This was a very good summary of every single Republican and conservative talking point on economics for the past couple of months. Um, you know, the, the whole idea that COVID benefits are just going to get people to not work, maybe raise wages and they'll be inclined to work. Um, yeah, that was despicable, though. Absolutely despicable. And clearly they got some flack from it. Because... Later, the next day, John Taffer tweeted the following. Regarding an interview I did yesterday, I want to sincerely apologize for using a terrible analogy in reference to the unemployment situation. That was not my intention, and I greatly regret it. My comment was an unfortunate attempt to express a desire for our lives to return to normal. Well, th th no, no, he... At, at no point did he... This is such bullshit. At no point was he mentioning, like, normality in any way. I recognize this has been a challenging year for everyone. Clearly not for you, because you're filthy fucking rich. And you can bend... Like, this guy is a... Is an, a, a bar and nightclub entrepreneur. And I don't think bar staff is among the best paid type of worker in the US. Anyway, I recognize this has been a challenging year for everyone. And I'm eager for the hospitality industry to come back stronger than ever. Yeah, by exploiting workers more and more and more. That's what they want. Um, you know, this is like just one step behind libertarianism. Um, you know, the difference is that these people are still happy to receive any sort of government funding uh, or any kind of subsidies or benefits. I mean, he was open about it. He said, well, this money should be given to employers. So they're happy to have the handouts. They're happy to give, you know, this patronizing lecture about workers being lazy with these with the COVID relief money. 
Um, but then when they get all these benefits, the, somehow they deserve it. There's, there's no, there's also no punishment at all for, for companies who take advantage of these subsidies or benefits at all. They're, they're not seen as lazy. Um, yeah. I mean, if we can take this further and further if they really wanted to, if they were in power and had absolutely every single policy lever available to them. People like this, people like Laura Ingram uh, and John Taffer, if he was in politics, these people would scrap every sort of, of, of labor regulation that there is. Scrap the minimum wage, just scrap anything. One step behind actual libertarianism. And honestly, I, I, I'm at the point where I think that a libertarian utopia, if one could call it a utopia, would have slavery. Because every freaking debate that I ever see of libertarians, uh, they, most of them somehow defend slavery in some way. So that's the road to, to real serfdom, to quote Hayek. The road to serfdom is believing that these people actually stand for workers in any way. It's just the ruse. Don't buy it. But yeah, this is Fox News for you. This is uh, the network that people like Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald think uh, that they're actually the solution to the liberal, the liberal media like MSNBC and CNN. Yeah. As bad as MSNBC and CNN are, and yes, they are horrible, they would never air a segment like this. So, on that note, thanks for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe. And yeah, don't watch Fox News. They're, they're awful. And, and don't think that far-right populism, especially using the, the Jimmy Dore narrative, that far-right populist and left-wing populist have more in common, that is bullshit. Because the world that they want, or the world that they're going to end up getting, if they vote for the politicians that play this populist rhetoric, um, that is the world that you're going to get. The world crafted by people like John Taffer and Laura Ingram. That's the world you'll get.